Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today I'm bringing you an update on the four Venus flytraps that I bought from Walmart and repotted about two months ago. We so often see plant or gardening YouTube channels where they show you how to repot or plant something and they never get to see it again. Today I'm going to show you the two week and 60 day update. It's not always pretty, but it is the reality of repotting Venus flytraps. The acclimation period and repotting shock always comes with some black and dying traps but if done right, the new healthy green growth will be right behind it. Today I'm bringing you a video. It's going to be kind of quick here. It's just an update. I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the progress looks like with these Venus flytraps. I got these from Walmart about two weeks ago and I did the complete repotting exactly two weeks ago. So this is a two week update. And what I want to do is I want to kind of show you this process. I've acclimated these to the sun. At least I've began that process and I want to show you what they look like and kind of what you can expect after a couple of weeks things to look for, things to watch out for, that kind of stuff. One of the things we're going to talk about today is sunburn caused from the sun in the acclimation process and then also kind of repotting shock. I'm going to show you a little bit of that today so you kind of know what to expect and, and to see that some of that stuff is, is perfectly normal. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So one of the things that I wanted to show you first here that I think is really important is I want to show you kind of what sunburn looks like. If you look right here, you'll see there's kind of a browning of the leaf right there. You can see that's kind of a, a moderate sunburn. And that's perfectly fine. There's some more down here. You can expect that to happen when you're acclimating this to the sun. Some of this old growth is going to get some sunburn like that. And that's perfectly acceptable. There's some over here. What you want to look for is if you notice that your leaves are, are turning brown entirely like that and starting to go all the way down the entire leaf, that means you're probably in the sun a little too much. And you want to kind of pull it out of the sun a little bit. Don't give it as much sun exposure until you've let it acclimate a little bit more. I like to do two or three hours for my first day, see if there's any burning. If there's no burning, I'll do it for the same amount for a few more days. And then I kind of increase that by an hour every three to six days as I see that they're not getting sunburn. And if you start to see a little bit of sunburn kind of on the fringes like these ones here, that's probably okay, especially since this is all of the old growth and a lot of the new growth isn't going to get that sunburn. Another thing you'll notice here is that uh, some of these old leaves here even though they're not sunburned they're still kind of dying and fading that's also perfectly normal that's that's kind of a sign of repot shock and when you get new venus fly traps and you take them out of their old substrate and you put them in new conditions it's really really common for there to be repotting shock you can see a lot of the old fly traps are here dying that's because of the shock from being in a new planter but that's also because of being acclimated to the sun these may have been in a nursery and under grow lights for their entire life and now we're kind of getting them acclimated to the sun so they're just really starting to get used to their new environment and that's perfectly fine what you want to look for is here's a good example right here this is what we're looking for you can see all of this new growth coming up it has been in full sun for a couple weeks and it's getting acclimated so this new growth should take off really really well this is a new trap here that just came up it was one that was already starting to come up so it's kind of stunted a little bit and you can see even as I get close here, you can see some of the tips of the cilia there's a little burned, and that's perfectly fine as well. And you'll notice that it's a little bit smaller than some of the other growth that's already existing on here, and that's okay because it's still acclimating itself. What happened is this plant here actually just kind of feasted. I put it out there, the traps were all ready, and you can see almost all the big traps that were growing on here closed, and they have flies in them now. There's a, there's a fly in that one, there's a fly in that one. So a lot of these are capturing flies and they're starting to support some of the new growth coming up here so that all those flies that they're catching is supporting the new growth there's another one getting ready to open right here so you can see almost all of these have really good healthy new growth that's another one that's coming up right now that one's got all, a bunch of new growth coming up that one's doing really really well this one here has some new growth too you can see there's some really nice new growth down here coming up what you want to watch out for and what you don't want to see is like this one right here. You see how this one is new growth, but it's completely black on the tips. That's not a good sign. Now, I think this is a different plant than this one here as they look like they're coming from slightly different growth points. So this one might be just having a little bit harder acclimating because it's a little bit smaller and younger. So I'll keep my eye on it. But you can see down if you look down in here, you can see I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up. But down there, there is some new growth coming up from this little smaller one. So I think it's going to be fine. But if you start to see all of your fly traps coming up and having black on them and dying, the new growth, that's really not a good sign. That means either it's not acclimated completely to the sun or you have a different condition that's not good for it. Say maybe the soil's not 
right or your water is not right. That kind of stuff could be one of the reasons why you're starting to see some really black growth. You really shouldn't see too much black growth. You should a little bit like this one here, like some of your older traps, the existing traps should be turning black and dying. That's perfectly fine. A lot of your new growth, you really shouldn't be seeing any black on the new growth coming up. That's, that's a sign that something is definitely wrong. This is kind of what it looks like, and I just kind of want to give you an update. Here's two weeks. You can see, as of right now, they don't look nearly as nice as they did when I first replanted them. A little bit of shock going on, a little bit of sunburn. But overall, with all the new growth coming up, it's looking pretty dang good. And real quick, before I show you the 60-day update, I want to show you how you can get your hands on your very own Venus flytrap or other amazing carnivorous plants. Check this out. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, we have hit the 60 day mark. It's actually about 57 days, but we're just about at two months of since I repotted these Venus fly traps. If you remember the video, I think I showed you a little bit of it at the beginning, so you kind of remember what this video was. I just want to give you an update here and just show you what the process looks like. So you can see here we're doing pretty well. What I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to go ahead and actually show you these and then I'm going to kind of trim them up and give you an idea. I haven't done any trimming. The only thing I've done is actually I've cut off a couple of flowers just because these are new repots and I didn't want any of the energy from the flower growing to be diverted from getting bigger and better traps. And while they're kind of settling in their new home and acclimating to the sun and everything, I didn't want there to be an energy suck from, I had two flowers, I can, there was one there and I can't remember where the other one was, it's on here somewhere, but it was, I think it might've been that one over there. But I didn't, I didn't trim these up, I didn't groom them. I just want to show you realistically what you can expect and what they're going to look like after a couple of months because what happens is is as they're acclimating after you're repotting them they're getting over the shock of being repotted a lot of the stuff that was on there originally dies a lot of traps turn black and it's really really common for you to have kind of a mess like this one here so then what i'll do is after i kind of show you all of these then i'll go through and i'll trim them up and kind of show you what that looks like and so you can kind of see what i trim off what i leave and so you can kind of know what my process is but so there's that one there you can see I've got some really nice traps you can see they're turning a really beautiful shade of red it's been over 100 degrees here the last three or four days and they they really haven't looked like they've gotten hit too much there's a little bit of uh, extra redness I think happening because it's been so hot you can tell this one's been facing the Sun directly this one's here has been a little more in the back as you can see it's why they're a little more green so it hasn't had quite as much direct Sun but you can see it's really really healthy it's got some new traps coming up the traps are really nice sized, looking really, really good. And then this one over here also has some really, really nice color, some nice big traps, looking beautiful. This one here has probably been the, the longest to recover and it's kind of took it the hardest, but you can see there is definitely some new growth coming up. It's starting to look good. You can see it just caught this guy here. Let's see if I can show you a close up of him. It's kind of neat. You didn't quite make it. So you get, yeah, you didn't quite make it. That's probably not good for this trap. Odds are this trap will probably die. Usually if it doesn't seal, the trap dies. So that kind of stinks. But you can see that overall, just based on kind of what I'm showing you here, this trap, this this plant has really ate well. It's been outside the whole time. I took about two or three weeks to acclimate it. So I was really, really careful with that to make sure that I didn't really shock it. So. Yeah, that's kind of the, the sasser. What you're looking for is you want to make sure that these plants have the new growth coming up. That's what's really important. You want to make sure that the new growth isn't like damaged or deformed. Sometimes that can mean that it's that it's getting rotted and it's not looking good. Or it can mean that you have a pest problem. If you got a lot of new growth coming up and all the new growth is dying, turning black. But you can see most of my new growth here looks really, really good. Looks really, really healthy. So that's the 60-day uh, the update. That's what you could have kind of expect. It's not... The prettiest you can see you can see there's a lot of black a lot of debris a lot of gross stuff a lot of death but that's totally fine that's totally normal when a plant goes through the shock and it goes through acclimating especially when you're acclimating it to outside 
you get the the kind of old dead stuff but then you have all this new beautiful green and red stuff coming up so I'm gonna go ahead and I get the trimming so we can check out what it looks like after it's been groomed up just wanted to take a moment to thank you for being here. I'm trying really hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and you being here is really supporting my dream. You can actually support the channel by clicking the thanks button at the bottom and dropping some money like a tip. Don't want to kick me some of your hard earned cash? I totally understand that. You can actually like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and watch the video all the way to the end. Those are things you can do to support my channel that actually don't cost you any money but really really helps me out. You can also download the free tracker and fly trap care sheet at the link above. Okay, maintenance completed. So you do your best not to, to close any traps or to trigger any traps. I did trigger one there on accident. That's inevitable, it's going to happen. You also wanna try really hard not to cut off any good green traps that are coming up. Um, but sometimes that's inevitable too. It'll just happen, don't be too hard on yourself. I'm gonna show you real quick here, a cool little spider that I found hanging out in there. These really do draw a lot of sort of natural spiders that aren't pests. They're actually good because they do kill some of the the pests that you might have. It's not doing a very good job of, you can probably see it pretty good right there, but a little spider there. And another cool little find that I found, the carnivorous plant weed is striking again. You see I got a little sundew coming up there and then another one coming up right there little sundews. It's kind of hard to stop them from spreading sometimes. All right, so that's what it looks like. Now that it's all trimmed up, it looks a lot nicer, a lot neater. Uh, you can see there's my pile of dead cuttings. I just use a little pair of scissors and a little tweezers. It's really good to kind of keep them. You want to, I would say probably every couple of weeks going and trim it up. I let this one go probably longer than I should have. But the, the, the good thing is, is that clearing that out gives, gives it a lot more air and stuff to the to the bottom of the plant. It also prevents rot. Rot can happen if you have too much black stuff down, it'll start to generate some mold and some mildew and stuff, which can be kind of gross. And it's just good to kind of keep them, they look a lot nicer. So it's just kind of overall for the best to, to clear out the old black stuff. You can see sometimes I will cut off a little bit if I can tell that one is green, but it's going to die. I'm definitely gonna cut that off if it's gonna die within the next week or so, just because I'm probably not gonna do this again for another month. So might as well get rid of that stuff. It's not really helping the plant. Anything that's got this nice bright green color to it though, you wanna leave because it is photosynthesizing and it is helping the plant absorb sun. So like this one here, not in great condition, but it is still pretty green, so I left it. This one here was kind of a 50-50. I probably could have cut that one off, but yeah. So this little guy right here, yeah, little beetle. Yeah, so there's my 60 day update. I'll try to go ahead and uh, keep you updated on this one. Probably one more update before we go into dormancy. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.